Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to look at some absolute value functions in this lesson. Um, that's, again, the function notation from our previous lesson um, incorporated with solving absolute values. So just a quick recap on what an absolute value is. Whatever is inside the absolute value symbols become positive. So in this case, x would become positive x. Here are two examples. If you have negative 2 inside the absolute values, it becomes positive 2. If you have positive 2, it remains positive 2. So those are the two um, types of basic things that you can get inside of absolute value symbols. If it's a negative, it becomes positive. If it's a positive, it stays positive, and that's how it, absolute values work. So let's look at absolute value graphs. When you have an absolute value, because it goes to a certain point, and then when it starts turning negative, it kind of goes the other direction. Absolute value graphs look like a V. All right? They can be wide or narrow, depending on the type of, of um, function that they are. But basically, they'll look like a V. They'll go up and then down, or down and then up. And they'll usually you know, come to a point. The vertex here is just kind of up and down. All right? Now let's go ahead and solve some absolute values. Here's some absolute values that we can go ahead and solve in function notation. So this is our function g of x is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus x. So using the function notation, what this tells me down here is that I'm going to solve when x is equal to 6. So 5 minus 6, I'm going to solve the absolute value of that. So g at the point 6 is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus 6, which is negative 1. So my function then, g at point 6, is equal to positive 1. Again, the absolute value of a negative number is going to give me a positive number. Now let's look over here. Um, g at the point negative 2 is equal to the absolute value of 5 minus negative 2. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that. 5 minus negative 2 is the same as 5 plus 2. So my function, g at the point negative 2, is equal to 5 plus 2, which is positive 7. And anything inside the absolute value remains positive. So my function at 2 is equal to positive 7. And so that's the function at that point. All right? So those, that's how we would solve some simple absolute value questions, just the function of g, g of x at the point that we're given here, 6 and negative 2. All right. Now we've got a little bit more of a complicated function, and I'm given a table of values. What this table of values means is that I'm going to plug in these values, negative 4, negative 2, 0, positive 2, 4, and 6, into this equation. All right, everywhere I see the x. So I'm going to start out by writing it in this form. The function of f at the point negative 4. You'll also notice that I substitute in negative 4 here where I see the value of x. Now I'm just going to solve. Um, 5 minus negative 4 is the same as 5 plus 4, so I have 9. And now I'm going to take the absolute value of 9, which is positive 9. Negative 2 times positive 9 gives me negative 18 minus 1 is negative 19. All right? I'll plug that into my table over here for my value of y. Notice the function output is our y value. We can put y up here. We could also list this as, instead of y, we could list that as the function of x. And you'll often see table of values um, written in both ways. I've chosen to write it in terms of y. Um, a lot of times you'll see it with that function of x right in the top here. Okay, it means exactly the same thing. When you're graphing them, you want to graph them in, in terms of x and y. All right, let's move on to our next um, value, the function of x at the point negative 2. So I've substituted negative 2 into the equation right here. 5 minus negative 2 is the same thing as saying 5 plus 2. So I get a positive 7. 2 times positive 7 is negative 14. 
because that's a negative 2 times positive 7. Negative 14 minus 1 is negative 15, and I'll plug that into my table of values. I'm just going to keep going. Function at the point 0. 5 minus 0 is 5. Negative 2 times positive 5 will give me negative 10. Minus 1 is negative 11. All right. Now I'm going to plug in the value of positive 2. See, this is very repetitive at this point. Um, so I apologize if I'm going a little bit too quickly here. But we're basically doing the same things over and over and over. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 times negative 2. And you can solve this in an extra step if you want. But while it's positive, I'm just treating that like it's multiplication because absolute value of positive 3 is positive 3. Positive 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Minus 1 is negative 7. All right. And this does change a little bit um, in the next, not, not in this one, in the next one. And you'll see that here, the function at the point 4. Again, it's negative 2 times 5 minus 4. 5 minus 4 is 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2 minus 1, which gives us negative 3. And this is where it gets interesting. Because you'll notice these are, these are kind of linear at this point. Negative 19, negative 15, negative 11, negative 7, negative 3. So we kind of have a pattern here. Well, what happens when we drop to the next point? All right, watch what happens. The function at the point positive 6. Negative 2 times 5 minus 6. Now, 5 minus 6 gives us negative 1 inside the absolute value. So in this one, I've actually added an extra step. And that's to change it from the absolute value of negative 1 to being positive 1. Negative 2 times positive 1 gives us negative 2 minus 1. So we have negative 3 again. Now, in our absolute value graph, you can see that it's going it's getting larger and larger and larger. Right? Then it's getting closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. And then it bounces back down again to the same place. In a graph, that would look like this. It just goes up and up and up and up and up, and then it stops. And then it goes to the same place. Now, what that means to me is that my absolute value graph is going to look like this. And this is very approximate graph here. But that's what it means to me, is that I have gone up towards here. And at some point, I'm going to hit the, maybe hit the x-axis. I don't, I don't know if I, I did at any point. Um, but this is approximately what that graph would look like. So if I started putting in larger numbers, 8, 10, 12, 16, my numbers would actually start matching up exactly with those ones. And that's kind of part of graphing absolute values, that they, they do end up matching up like that. So hopefully seeing that graph has helped a little bit as well with this table of values. We've gotten some practice working with um, absolute value functions today.